Hi, I'm David Pounds, Chair of the Art Department at Palm Beach Atlantic University. I'd like to take a few minutes to share with you some of the techniques that I've developed to do silk screening on stained glass. I was looking for ways to get more detail in my copper foil stained glass windows, so I started looking at glass painting. The traditional glass painting process you see in church windows involves creating the line work and shading by hand with a brush. With a lot of time and practice, I could have gotten to the point of competency, but I wanted to find a process that would allow me to use my existing expertise in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. I hoped that a silkscreen process would get me the results I was looking for. After a fair amount of research and experimentation, I settled on Rouché glass paint. Unlike some other glass painting products, Rouché is permanent and doesn't fade over time. It comes in powder form and it's pretty expensive. The price for a one pound jar runs $85 and up, depending on the color, with purple being the most expensive because it has gold as an ingredient. The powder can be mixed with a variety of mixing mediums, including water. Rouché sells a product called squeegee oil that is specifically designed for silk screening. I started slowly, just doing black lines. After I completed several windows with good success, I tried to do some shading. After some false starts, I was able to get both very fine detail in the line work and some nice shading in a window called Steampunk Under Glass. It took first place in the professional division of the McMahal Art Glass Competition, as well as first place in the Delphi Art Glass Festival. The piece I'm currently working on is an adaption of Art Nouveau artist Alphonse Mucha's Job poster. Even with glass painting, I needed to alter the design a bit to work as a stained glass window, plus I happen to like the round window format. I used Illustrator to create the complex line work and shading, then I imported the file into Photoshop to experiment with different color schemes. Once I was satisfied with the colors, I printed out a full-size color version to help me remember what colors go in what areas of the design. I've already set up most of my windows to be printed out. I've got a few pieces left over that I'm going to combine into one print. What I'm going to do in Illustrator is select the element I want, then copy it, Command C. Then I'm going to jump over to Photoshop where I have set up a document that is 11 inches by 17 inches with a resolution of 1200. Then I'm going to paste Command V. I do want it to be pixels. The fact that this element is backwards is intentional. I will explain the reason for that later. Now I will flatten the image, then go to Image, Adjustments, Invert. What's going to happen here is when I print this out to the special silk screen paper, the white area is going to be an opening in the screen and the black area is going to be blocked out. It's a little bit more involved if you want to do shading rather than solid lines. This is the shading I want. In the Illustrator file, having this be a light gray is fine. But since we're going to print this in a lighter color ink, it will work out better if I make this black. I have the blended shape selected, and as before, I'm going to copy it, then jump over to Photoshop and paste it. Now you can see this nice smooth tone here. There's really no way to reproduce that with silk screen. Uh, it either needs to be an opening in the screen or it needs to be blocked out. You can't really have anything in between. So uh, one way that sometimes works but quite often doesn't is I'm going to go from mode uh, grayscale to bitmap and I'm going to put this at 1200 and make this be a halftone screen. And this is where I can decide how coarse it's going to be. The lower the number, the more coarse it is. Uh, when it works, I found that 40 works okay. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this, and you can see that you get these this little dot structure in here. The problem is when it when it uh, prints out, sometimes you're going to get this banding, and that doesn't look good at all. So if you do get that, there's another way to get around that. Same place, image mode bitmap, and then we're going to put 100 for the output and we're going to change it from halftone screen to diffusion dither and let's click OK. 
So what we wind up with is a similar concept where it's either black or white, so this would be a hole or not a hole, um, but this doesn't have the same kind of repetitive pattern to it that the halftone screen does, so you don't get that banding. So this works out pretty well. Uh, then, of course, here the next step would be to go to um, Image, Adjustments, and Invert. The area that you see is white, that's going to let ink through, and then the area that you see is black, that's going to block it off so that we can then uh, go ahead and make this be the, the nice shading that we're looking for. I get the special silkscreen paper from a company called Rhinotech. It comes in two sizes, 8.5 by 11 and 11 by 17. This paper needs to be printed on a laser printer, and inkjet won't work. By applying heat to the paper while it is in close contact with the silkscreen mesh, the toner and the chemicals in the paper fuse onto the mesh to make a stencil. Rhinotech says you can use a regular clothes iron to apply the heat and pressure. They even have a YouTube video to demonstrate the process, but I found I get better results using a dry mount press. In order to do it this way, I use a low profile pre-made UDU 220 mesh screen. To make sure the paper stays in contact with the mesh, I put a piece of 3 8 inch foam core under the screen when I put it in the dry mount press. I leave it in the press at 250 degrees for 4 minutes. When it comes out it's pretty hot so be careful. Let it cool for about 10 minutes then carefully peel off the paper leaving the stencil adhered to the mesh. You don't have to do this next step, but I find it makes ink cleanup easier if you tape off the areas of the mesh you don't need for printing. To use the screen again with another design, you wash off the stencil with a special Rhinotech chemical cleaner and a pressure washer. I have 15 or 16 of these screens, so I wait until I've used them all up before cleaning them all at once.